That's right. And thank you so much. Welcome back to the show again. You know, this is David Kogan with the Alliance's Hero Show. Keep on watching. You know, we're all over the internet. You can go to aliancer.com to find past episodes. And thank you again for the feedback we continue to get when I recently interviewed the founder of E Entertainment. So I'm so excited again about having our next hero back. We're good friends, and he always has something so interesting going on. And so welcome to the show, Mark Victor Hansen, and you can reach him at markvictorhansenlibrary.com. Now, Mark, I'm just going to steal a little bit of the thunder. You're known for uh, creating, well, of course, the, you know, being uh, part of the um, Chicken Soup for the Soul series, uh, Ask the Bridge from Your Dreams to Destiny, The One Minute Millionaire, The Enlightened Way to Wealth, and Cracking Millionaire Code, Your Key to Enlightened Wealth, and a whole lot more. And we're going to talk about something really exciting today. I'm going to have you take the thunder for that. But welcome again back to the show. My pleasure. It has been a delight to be your friend. And more importantly, because of what you and I do, we people think that we're the celebrity. But the people we're talking to are the celebrity because there's greatness in each and every individual. And what you try to do as E-Alliances is bring out that wonderful potential in business and life and joy and happiness and family. And I'm just... I'm thankful that you've allowed me or invited me to participate on a multiplicity of times. And you've brought not only me, but my wife and and friends like uh, Jeff Hoffman, who are just absolute superstars and our son, Preston and stuff. So it's been very exciting for me. Absolutely. And it's always an honor to have you here. And amazing. You know how long I think we've known each other now for like five, six, seven, something years and stuff. So time has gone by um, going quite, like that quite a lot. So uh, I think it's a, this one's going to be a very important topic because um one of the things I know is, is we always, uh, as you get older, one thinks about a legacy, right? Uh, a legacy, what will what will they leave? And I think you're going to talk about something very precious that um, I think 99.99% of people don't know about, about a legacy. So can you go ahead and talk to us about what's going on regarding that and what you've got? Yeah. Well, as you said, I used to be a professional speaker that wrote books. And, and the first time I did that, I sold 20,000 books in a year at $10 each, made 200,000. That's 50 years ago now. So uh, 1974. So that's like a mind blower to look back at. And then all of a sudden, uh, Dr. Canfield, Jack Canfield and I get together and create the Chicken Soup Empire, which you know sold over 500 million books around the world and still selling like crazy in a couple of movies now. And uh, then we sold the company about a decade ago, a little longer. And then suddenly... Um, we had this crazy thing called COVID hit and we've gone from 19,000 bookstores to 400 independent bookstores, which breaks my heart. Cause I, if, if you look here in my library, I have over 50,000 books. I haven't read every word of every one, but I've touched every one. I've highlighted some, I've read what was important to me, made notes. And, and I said, wait a second, you know, we can't let bookstores and books die. So, and what happens is the minute we learn that when somebody writes a book, then they start reading more. And I learned that when my children were in elementary school at uh, Kaiser Elementary, they went to Montessori and then they went to Kaiser. And I sat through six kindergartens and finally found this teacher that was a, a great, inspiring teacher, Ms. Fellows. And I, she sang to the kids. She had them whisper to each other. She had them jiggle each other. She played the piano and and sang in English and Spanish. And and it just, every kid learned everything. And, and my daughters have done, uh, all of five of our kids have done excessively well. You know most of them. Anyhow, so the the book industry was going like this. And, and the biggest company, which when I did One Minute Millionaire, Random House paid me a million dollars for, I wrote it. But they're, they laid off 8,000 people in Crystal. I said, wait a second, the book industry is going south. We got to figure out how to make it go north. So we said, well, we'll start our own publishing company. And we're going to take people's impact story and bring it to life. And then all the way to the legacy, just let me say, I'll do my little cliche that I wrote. A biography, there's biographies and autobiographies. We'll define that in a minute. But a biography is the only lasting legacy of love that gave your family, your friends, the future, and the world that goes into perpetuity. In other words, the people you and I have had at, at Alliances. A lot of them are millionaires, decamillion, 10 million, uh, cent millionaires, 100 million or a billion. And, and nowadays we got three people fighting to be trillionaires in the world like Elon Musk and Bezos and, right. and Benson Wong, which is very exciting. 
But if you left all that money to people, what happens is in three generations, it's almost always gone. Rarely wow. is it not gone, with the exception of wow. Rockefellers and, and, and Andy Carnegie, my hero, and a few other people, which we'll talk to if you want. The point is, if you write your biography, you do five things. First of all, you tell them what your values are, then your principles, your philosophy, the trials and tribulation, because if somebody just gets money, they squander it. They're called trust key kids. But most importantly, what are your expectations? And let me just give you that in a nutshell. Yes. I want everyone to go to Andrew Carnegie's two houses, one in Scotland, where we'll be going shortly. One of my friends just bought it, 30,000 acres, which is sort of a mind blower. And we're writing his biography. And the one in New York is easy access, costs $5, get in. It's owned by the Smithsonian. But here's a guy with a third grade education. It became the richest man in the world. And the first line he writes, is off in marble on the ceiling. He had 60 quotes that he did, but authors are the wealth of the nation. Now, I'd change one word, of course, authors are the wealth of the world. But the point is, he really liked authorship. Number two, because said, no man or woman can get rich without enriching all others. Mm. Well, isn't that good? That's powerful. But That's what he powerful. did is he started, I, I call him Library 2.0. Library 1.0 is obviously Alexander the Great. I mean, he put all the collated information of the whole world on Alexandria, Egypt, which is one of the places we're going to go to when it's safe and there's not a war going on in the Middle East. But um, number two is is Andy Carnegie. He said, I'll spend the first half of my life making the money, second half of my life giving it away, do the most good. What did he give us? He gave us 4,852 libraries in America and then more around the world. <clears throat> but he said <clears throat> to have a real legacy, remember this last thing, what are your expectations of your kids? For them to be heirs, H-E-I-R-S, right? Some people don't know that word. That means they're the kids, right? Or right. the great grandkids. Right. They have to increase the amount of books in the library to by 10% a year. They got to increase the amount of members coming in by 10% a year. And, and then he went on and on and on. But you get the message. I do. You don't you and I know business works if you're growing, you're thriving, if you're stopping, you're dying. Right. So how does it work then to the fact is, is OK, you know, everybody's so busy. They don't have the time, the patience to go about, you know, writing this, writing something, writing a book, writing a biography. Um, and of course, if they're not experts like you in regards to writing and publishing and all the things that it takes uh, to do that and, and get it printed and everything, right, even from the cover and all that, um, how do they get that done? Ta-da! That's where we come in. We started as a ghostwriting company. As you know, I went bankrupt in 1974. I've been building, I built the Wall Street Racket Club in New York City and houses and botanical gardens, all kinds. And I was building out of PVC, out of plastic, buying from Monsanto and I was buying $40,000 worth of plastic a month and they shut me off all at once. I went bankrupt all in one day, which was my best, worst experience. For six months, I was sleeping out and seeing me, but I suddenly, two guys and said, hey, look, look, we'll go see Norman Vincent Peale, the guy who helped us get out of the depression with power of positive thinking in the morning. In the afternoon, we'll go see Reverend Ike from three to six in, in Motel called Harlem. It was actually Washington Heights. Anyhow, I went and he turned my mind around because he said, if God's rich and you're made in the image and likeness of God, you should be rich. And he said, every line in the Bible is my cup runneth over. And wow. John 10, 10, I, I've come that you might have life and have more abundantly. And I thought, wow, I didn't get that in the Baptist and Lutheran church growing up. And so long story short, I attend that guy's church seven years and I'm in New York and just get wowed. I teach at his business living seminar. He and I became very close friends, probably the only billionaire minister ever. And he was a supernatural healer. He could have people come in with cancer for and heal them. He could have people come in with tuberculosis on a stretcher and heal them. And there we're talking about 5,000 people a Sunday and the places were packed. And he was an evangelist. Anyhow, he dies in 2009. He was a great friend. My His wife calls me up and said, you got to write his biography. And I said, I haven't written one of those, but we wrote this biography, which is oh, about I love it. Reverend Ike, wow. an extraordinary man of influence. And Psalm 72 says unequivocally, you're here to be an influencer of influencers. Isn't that a great line Solomon wrote? An influencer wow. of influencers. So obviously he influenced me to get rich. I've been doing seminars basically my whole life in, in a lot of industries. And and uh, 
made a lot of people rich. I, I, I think as a living speaker, I'd probably, I'd say two or three of us have probably made more millionaires than anybody else. Myself, Tony Robbins, I can name a few others. And we're all friends. This is not, the, the goal is we got to get everyone rich. Everyone should be healthy, happy, well-fed. We got to have clear skies, blue water, and everyone get to live sort of the life they want. But they got their input determines their throughput and their output. And, and everyone reads their need to read positive self-help action books. Now, I've written 321 of them and sold over a half billion. I'm the world's best-selling nonfiction author. But I wrote a book, which you can go get cheap, $10 at any bookstore called You Have a Book in You because everyone has a book in them. Everyone has right. a story in them. All we do in answer to your question, I know that's a big circle I've done, but is we ghost write your book. We interview whoever it is and ghost write their book. And let me just go, can I? Bumble please, please. And more. just real quick, you're watching, listening to me, David Kogan, host of the Alliances Hero Show. Make sure that you go to Eliancer.com or you, in fact, you can go to Eliances.com and click radio. That's E-L-I-A-N-C-E-S.com, the only place where entrepreneurs align. And we have with us again, Mark Victor Hansen. You can reach him at MarkVictorHansenLibrary.com. Once again, that's MarkVictorHansenLibrary.com. And we're talking why everyone ultimately needs to have a biography written and he's explaining why and how and how the process works because again imagine having to write your own i mean the time that it would just take and and do all that so um just real quick though from what i understand them you said you interview them what what you know because people are looking at too is this okay can you explain a little bit more about how that process works and i think the thing is is how long is the process like because someone's looking at okay i may not have six months to go ahead and do and spill all everything about my whole life. I hope they're going to live more than six months. <laughs> if they don't, let's have them talk fast. And the other thing too, Mark is, is at what point or what age or what thing is, is, is there that somebody should do something like this? Because you never, you do never know. You, you asked three phenomenal questions as always, David. And, and first of all, I want to put a pitch in. If you're not an entrepreneur, we're going into rough times economically worldwide. Decide to be an entrepreneur. And David at Alliances teaches, find a problem. And there's a lot of them. If we get 8 billion people, there's 8 billion problems. Solve the problem, scale it, make a fortune, and then and be excessively charitable. So earn a lot, save a lot, invest a lot, and, and become irresistibly charitable. Okay, back to your three questions. Uh, number one is I if, if I could do it over again, and, and I've had the greatest life with my ups and downs, you ought to write a new biography every 10 years because you're a new person in 10 years. Mm. Um, and and if you're really rich and happen to be listening, um, Mitzi Purdue, who wrote my biography, who is amazing. You've had her on your show and you know her very well, but she only does 22 million chickens a week at Costco. So, and, you know, so she's, she's giant or business. Her, her daddy, her, her book she wrote on me is called Relentless. And there's her little picture on the back in case you've never sure. seen Mitzi. Yeah. And, and she's 84 and happy and now indefatigably in love with a new man, but because her husband died. But originally her daddy created the Sheridan Hotel chain during the depression and built 400 Sheridans. So she's the only double heiress in America. Then she meets this guy, Frank Purdue, and he says, I think I can trust you. And they had the, it's the greatest love story ever. And she wrote his biography, her dad, Ernest Hemingway's, but Ernest Henderson's biography, and now my biography, because she said, you're the most interesting character I've ever met. I said, I am. And she's a great friend with Crystal and I, and, nice. and she wrote it, but her family will not let anyone be an heir, an H-E-I-R again, to the finances of the, of the estate Unless starting at age 40, they write a biography every decade, which I think, mm -hmm. wow, what a cool idea. Because we change in a decade and you need to hand it down over the years of what you thought felt. I mean, if you look at the Bible objectively, just as a book of history, it's 66 authors that told their story of how they related to God and how God related to and through them and, and how they accomplished greatness. But it's actually, a, a, I happen to love the Bible and I did Obviously, the Bible that we sold 70,000 a week called Chicken Soup oh, and the yeah. Soul Bible. And we yeah. did little stories to get in the big story, but we did it so it'd be non threatening with tan pages and, and the little colorful stories. It still sells like crazy. Uh, the, the point is, is that we need to capture the story of your life. 
Wouldn't you like David, just you personally answering your question number two, to know what your parents, grandparents, great grandparents, both maternally and put a mother's side and father's side did back two, three, four, ten generations? Yes, because I think we don't know really beyond almost our you know immediate right. We really don't know a whole lot. At least most don't a grandfather and certainly great grandfather and they're on. So yes, it would yeah. be incredible. It would be incredible to know the stories. Yeah, I mean, I. by the way, because I'm now a biographer full-time, uh, Chris and I are writing, helping people write their fiction, nonfiction, and then biography or autobiography, and, and we are doing phenomenal. So I'll do, just give an example. This thing you said about time is one of the questions, is that I get called by John Paul DeJoria, who you've had on your uh, show, and, and JP and I have been friends 30 years. We both won the Horatio Alger Award for distinguished Americans where you get a gold medal in the U S Supreme court by uh, judge Clarence Thomas. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I've been to several of his houses around the world, but JP calls me from a ship in Greece where he's traveling is like two years ago with, uh, uh, Robert Kennedy jr. Was on his yacht as it turns out in his Greek isles. And he calls and said, Hey, look, I'm done with my book. Can I send it to you? And you endorse it. And he sent it to me and it had 19 pages. I said, uh, I said, I said, JP, you and I are a long, long, long time friends. Right. I told you to write a book, but this is not a book. He oh said, well, I, I told my story. I said, you told this much of your story. Right. Let me interview you. And then, <clears throat> so in answer to your question, we not only interview JP at depth, but we also interview all the 40 people that he works with, his, his, his three kids, his wife, his suppliers, the guys that helped him, the guys that sued him. We do the whole gamut, wow. the bad and the wow. ugly. And let me just do a story in a nutshell, because this is the greatest giver alive in America today. Very interesting. Came, that came from nothing, right? right. And you got to tell me if we got a break for a commercial, but <clears throat> JP is selling, knocking on doors and selling encyclopedia door to door, as you know, as a kid. He's 21 years old, has a four-year-old already. So he, obviously he was early married and, uh, he, you know, he grew up in a broken home and all that stuff, but he's going up the stairs and coming down the stairs as his wife said, throw me the keys. There's a note on our little John Anthony baby who's still alive and runs one of his companies now as a big guy, but he gets up and he reads the note and the note says, I'm out of here permanently. You'll never see me again. I've emptied the credit cards. I've emptied the bank accounts. I now got the keys of the car. I'm adios. I get goosebumps. This is a chicken soup story. Oh my now he has nothing but a motorcycle, a little big old break and down motorcycle. He takes little John Anthony. He goes, he is not a hell's angel, but he goes, he knows these guys and goes up to Griffith Park in LA, where I've been a lot of times. It's a beautiful place and goes there. And they not only feed him, but the hell's mamas take care of the baby. And now he's got to go on steroids and work and make money. But long story short, he starts Paul Mitchell hair with a lovely, lovely man who I, um, Inga. anyhow, I won't take you through that part of the right, short, yes, yes. But, but they got 37,000 beauty salons in 132 countries become, he, he he's done it into a trust 365 years in advance. Brilliant. Then all of a sudden he starts tequila and they say, you don't know anything about right. tequila. He goes bar to bar, sells the Beth tequila, does a hundred million bottles a month. Long story short, now, his philanthropy. First of all, he feeds everybody that's hungry in Austin, Texas, which is where his main house is. And he's got one in Malibu. And we've been to his, we had a stay at his 28,000 square foot um, Bali house in, in uh, Kona, Hawaii, which is just beyond spectacular, handmade house. Anyhow, but then he, oh. he is, he is, uh, it, down in the Caribbean and goes to an island called Barbuda that's been devastated by the hurricane. And he said, well, somebody's got to do something. I'm somebody, I'll buy it and do, do something. He made it hurricane proof, hired the top fish doctor in the world called an ichthyologist. They made it so it'll, a hurricane will never affect it again. Oh, wow. Brought back the turtles. They brought back the fish. They brought back 100% employment. He's now doing that for the whole Caribbean. No one ever thought you could do it. Here's a guy that most people would say, is, you're not very sophisticated. You're not educated. you got a long ponytail. You're a hippie. Right, right. And... Uh, you always walk around in t-shirts. You don't walk around in suits like a real businessman. This is a guy that owns 40 companies and has a multi, multi billionaire. <laughs> then he's in Africa and the king of Mali says, hey, look, my people are starving. He said, what do you need? He said, we need water. So he personally pays no obligation because, you know, the spiritual law is given secret. You'll be rewarded openly. 
<clears throat> he obviously is. He pays for 44 wells that grow so much food in the country of West Africa called Mali that he's feeding five countries around that. And I've gotten to talk to the king. I just got to tell you that he had the king at his place when we were doing one of the Zoom call interviews with him. And the king is as big as Shaq, who's a friend Jeez. of mine. Shaq has 22 inch food, you know, and King says, who are you? I said, I'm world's best-selling author. I'm Mark Victor and chicken, chicken soup. And the guy starts bounding up and down like this and says, if you're doing his, his biography, you got to do mine. Everybody wants to tell their story. Everybody has a story or stories that are of impact. And what, what we do at our company, and we do charge for it, but we bring out the magnificence of that person and the good, the bad, the ugly, the upset, the detours, because nobody's law nobody's life is a straight line at least and maybe you know maybe yours is perfect and never you know never, you know what mark I've done, I admit you had a problem mark you know i've done probably now over 1500 interviews of the who's who of, of and not one single one i don't think matches that at all and nobody and, and we don't know we you know so it's uh it's, it's truly amazing and amazing what you're doing. And again, one more time too, is, is again, you remember you're watching and listening to me, David Kogan, host of the Alliances Hero Show. It's the only place where entrepreneurs align. Make sure you check it out. And of course you can check out past interviews. And again, we've got with us, Mark Victor Hansen. You can reach him at markvictorhansenlibrary.com. He's Chicken Soup for the Soul series. Of course, you recognize him from that, plus many others. Uh, ask the bridge for your dreams uh, the bridge from your dreams to your destiny, the one minute millionaire, the enlightened way to wealth, cracking the millionaire code, your key to enlightened wealth. And it would take the rest of the show to list the number of books. And you have a number here, future diary, uh, and so much more. And of course, I do need to shout out to my mom because she's the first, she's how I ended up hearing about you when I was extremely young and I saw her books on the kitchen counter. And here we are later, and I'm actually having the opportunity, which is incredible, to interview uh, you today. So but tell, you. tell your mom thanks for investing in our books. My kids have shoes because of your mommy. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, I need to do one other thing, too, that I never shared with you is, is uh, I used to work for IBM. I was an executive with IBM, and they did something in regards to chicken soup for the soul, too. I don't recall exactly, but that was another place that I heard it from. So well, they used to hire me to do talks and. Because, you know, because IBM, which is a joke, means uh, international business machine is a real name, but everyone says it means I've been moved because when you do are successful, they push you around. That's what happened. Yeah, exactly. And and they're a great company and they're in, is it Armonk? Is that where they are in, in New York? Yeah. I mean, I went to the world yeah. headquarters. and Yeah, I worked in Atlanta, but yes. Mm -hmm. And it, wherever it is, I, I'm sure they got lots of headquarters, but uh, Tom, uh, what, Thomas uh, Wat, Watson started, right? Right. And uh, they had me come in and teach everybody how to do a story. You're the only one that's ever asked me about my experience with IBM, but it was beyond stellar. Everybody, they call it Big Blue, and all the men had to wear blue suits. So they said, when you come in here, you wear a blue suit and a white shirt and a red tie. I said, yes, I'll gladly do it. And they paid me a lot of money to do a lot of talks. So I'm, I'm very thankful for IBM. And it was a front end of computers. And I was there back when they were saying, oh, that laptop of Bill Gates, that's a dumb idea. That is never really <laughs> Oh, float wow. anybody's boat. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. Uh, because they so, said maybe they'll sell 7,000 of them in a lifetime. Well, so tell uh, So, our audience is definitely going to want to know. I want to make sure we go back to this is, is where do they start? They've heard this interview. They're interested about, okay, I want to have a bio, I want to have a biography. You know, where, where do I start? What's the process to it? So, let us know. Yeah. So, so if they go to markvictoransonlibrary.com, we have, first of all, you'll get to see all the other books we're doing, like John Paul DeJoria and Lyle Anderson, the father of, of Desert Golf here, where you know he built uh, Desert Mountain, Desert Highland, did all that great stuff with the little guy that's unknown, the number one golfer in the historical world is Jack Nicholas, who's even won more than Tiger Woods. But those courses were all built by Lyle here. So uh -huh. we're doing, and then we're doing one with a guy that, you, we got to have it. Alliance is uh, Ike Shahada. I'm sure you've eaten at at Ike's famous love sandwiches. I had them on. Yeah. Oh, you did have Ike on. Okay. Yeah. I was going to tell you we got to have them on. Hey, we're doing Ike's. Yeah. You're, You're doing, doing what for him? What? What are you doing for him? We're writing his biography. Oh my gosh. They're he owned. He owned. So Bob Proctor and I own two companies together. Who, who just passed away at 87. God bless Bobby. Anyhow, he called me up the night before he died, and he said, "I said, what are you doing?" He said, "I knew he was 
going to pass. But he said, I'm taking a, a Concord to heaven. I said, what a nice metaphor. Wow. Because right. anyhow, I won't go through that. But Bob and I talked to Ike and, and uh, Bob talked to Ike and said, okay, Ike, you got to have a written goal. You're the fastest growing food franchise in America. Ike's famous love sandwich and all Ike's famous love donuts, which is even growing faster. And he said, what, how many stores you want? He said, I'm going to beat Subway and have 5,001. So, you know, Bob and I teach you have a little card. I'm so happy and grateful that I'm opening up 5,001 stores and doing this, 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 and making a great profit. And it, it just, it, his story is so miraculous because he was homeless, another homeless guy uh, like JP that came out of nothing. And his story is so good. So as, as you know, I still do a lot of talks, predominantly at giant universities that are interested in, in uh, free enterprise. And uh, we're go Chris and I are going out and talking at the biggest one in Utah in a couple of days, UVU. Uh, Utah Valley University, uh, where Preston graduated our son. And and so we'll have the whole giant school because they want to make sure everyone understands it. They oper what, well, I'm holding up the mirror for you. Entrepreneurship is an opportunity that never existed before. Like it exists now, ladies and gentlemen. And I've written mostly entrepreneurial-oriented books. So the, the point I'm making is, Yes, you can go get a job with a man and go through the door of security, or you can go through the door of opportunity and say, especially if you're single and don't have any responsibility other than you, solve a problem, make it big. And one of the books we just finished was, uh, I, have you had Tommy Mello on your show? Um, the Yes. You, actually, I didn't have him on my show. He had me on his show three well, we weeks ago. Have, we need Three to weeks switch. ago. Well, Tommy owns A1 Garage Door. Yes. Um, Here's a guy who is told in in school, you're uneducable, you've got ADD and ADHD, and you're never going to get a job, and you're never going to do anything. So he fixes some guy's garage door, and then that guy says to another guy, get another garage door. And then pretty soon he fixes so many, he has to hire people to fix them. And now he last year he did $650 million. Two of his guys that were doing books with made a million dollars each. And, and uh, he is putting together all the service corporations here in Arizona and his headquarters here. And if you ever go to his office, it blows your mind. There's a wall as big as the one next to me is he's got a glass case. And the first book that he read was Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And then he read Thing Grow Rich. Then he read our book, Ask. And and then he wrote it, we wrote his book with him called Elevate because he wants everyone to elevate their awareness and not get stuck in somebody that is a naysayer. Every one of us. I'd love you to diss what I'm about to say, but every one of us gets beat up and says, you're stupid, you're dumb, you're incompetent, you can't do it, you're not smart enough, you can't build a business, you can't uh, go here, you can't marry that kind of woman. Whatever the negative is, the world is, I believe, 90% negative. And if you read any of the newspapers, they're all negative, basically. And, and so your show, Alliances, is so critical because... Zig Ziglar would say it gives you a checkup from the neck up because from the neck up that you go up and guys like Tommy is, uh, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, well, that name sounds uh, weak. This guy's big, strong, exercise hard every oh, day. He is. He, he's he solid. Is. He's a solid muscle. And and I did, did all the interviews with him for the Napoleon Hill Foundation. I can promise you mentally he is totally solid because when you decide to make a difference, your mind clicks, your 18 billion brain cells go beep, 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 beep. And you get focused in a passionately purposeful direction. Everything happens. And, and since we wrote his book, I, I think he's brought us three or four other of his peers to do books. We're doing one on plumbing now because here's what Crystal and I believe. And, and I, I think you'll believe it too. Half the people that go to college should not go to college. They should do service industries, whether it's plumbing, whether it's HVA, uh, air conditioning and heating. I don't want to use the abbreviations because some people around the world won't know who, what that is. Garage doors. Who'd ever think you could become a billionaire selling garage doors? Right, right. And then, oh, oh let me do one more thing about Tommy. So Tommy says, look, the garage doors break too much, the spring. So for 100 years, no one ever did a new spring. They just did one. So he invented his own spring. Now, here's a guy that's purportedly uneducable and slow. He is not slow, just like our friend Les Brown, not uneducable, 
Les Brown's one of the greatest speakers in the world and my close friend for 50 years. But he builds a new spring that guarantee guarantees. So he does your garage door for you, David, and it's guaranteed for 20 years. Not one year, not two years, but 20 years. Amazing. No, I was quite, and you're right. And, and just one other shout out, because uh, he'll probably end up hearing or seeing this too, is this, uh, Tom, I, I remember, so we did this interview literally maybe a few weeks ago. And at the end, he takes me in to show me his, um, you know, training and all that. The place is spotless, spotless where he does it, huge spotless. Then he's got his whole training crew there. I don't know, maybe 60, 70 people there. And he says, I all want you to meet David. David, tell him something. And he had me tell a story to him all just right off the cuff and all that. And it was quite interesting. And I mean, and you know, the thing I noticed about him too, and I think this is important just about with anything, it's the details. He had every, everybody was wearing the uniforms. The place was so, it was cleaner than any restaurant that I've ever been to. Have you ever seen his place? Oh, I've been there. I've been through it with him training. Oh. And he, the, the deal is he deals in impeccability. Right. The place is impeccable. The cars are impeccable. He insists. He says, look, you're, he takes people that could not get a job anywhere else that are willing and have aspiration and inspiration, dedication, put up the perspiration. He pays them to come for six weeks, houses them, gives them a truck, trains them on the spot with one of his people that is making a lot of money. They got a buddy up and then their buddy gets to watch them until they're perfect then they go out and he gives them a truck he gives them a, a territory and a business he was in 35 states now this year he's in 50 states going into canada and europe the guy is unstoppable he has an unquenchable space to serve and and you know christ i said the greatest function of servant of all he wants everybody to have a good safe garage garage door on their house or condom or apart a condominium or their apartment right. you know or complex or building or office building and right. and you know he just he is solid and now he's doing all these other businesses and then you know i keep helping like every day i'm watching videos and stuff by different people like cody sanchez and i send to him and he always says i don't know how you find all this brilliant stuff that you're curating for me and i said well I, I just know everybody that's anybody. And I, I want you to know more because the more you know, the more you grow, the more you help other people. So what I want to dispel in those people watching is, well, you're rich, so it's easy for you. No, I came out of absolutely zip. Marky here has paid for his own clothes since he's nine years old because my parents, would they're Danish immigrants that didn't speak English. They didn't know. They, there was no ESL. English is a second language. I had to and my brother, we all had to work. I was taught work ethic and I, I'm 76. I don't need to work. I'm financially, my future days are paid for. I promise you. The point is I'm working because I love it and I want to help other people. That's why everyone's got to read. You can't lead if you can't read it. And, and you, everyone needs to read books and hopefully they'll read some of mine and yours and everybody else's. But the more we write, the more chance there is we can push back. And, and, and the world's never been better off than it is because of guys like Andrew Carnegie who gave us the libraries. But we need everybody around the world to read positive, inspirational books because you get an academic education, that's great. But you need a self-help uh, education of audio, video, and, and reading for the rest of your life. In other words, the first 10 minutes and 10 pages you ought to read 10 pages of positive all but first thing in the morning and launch your day so you escalate and elevate your awareness and as you do your life's going to click i promise you when i stopped reading the new york times and all the bad news fit to print and i started reading positive self-help action stuff my life for the last 50 years has been pretty much vertically up not that i had that hiccups but overall it's up I, you know, I, yeah, positivity, absolutely. There's too much negativity. You're right. I totally stay focused on that. Now, Mark, I think a couple other questions I want to ask you, and I've been dying to ask you this. You know, you've written a, a ton of books. You've read a tremendous amount of books. Of the books that you've written, if there was, again, hypothetically, there's a fire, you're only able to pull one of your books out, which book would that be? And I know it's yeah, probably- The book my wife and I wrote is critical for everyone right now for three reasons. Number one, it's Ask. Like you said again and again, the bridge from your dreams. Everyone's got dreams. Last night we had dinner with a billionaire and he said, I live in my dreams. It, it, the bridge from your dreams to your destiny. Everyone was coded at birth with a destiny. I don't know what your destiny is. I'm going to tell you how to get it in one second, but we only cover three things. You can only ask three channels. You ask yourself, 
You ask others, ask God. Ask yourself, others, and ask God. That's it. There's no other channels. And the way you get in to find out what your destiny is, if you don't know, and I'll tell you what mine is in a second, but you 101 times before you go to sleep at night, after the phone's off, the kids are stopped, the dog's not barking, it's dark, quietly in the, in the quiet of your mind, because that's when the mind is most programmable, you say, God, what's your destiny for me? 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 In the middle of the night, you're going to wake up. Make sure you got a pen and paper next to the bed and write it out. Get your little butt out of bed and write it out. Because when God comes through, you say, oh, I'll remember in the morning. You won't remember in the morning. You say, man, I had the best idea. I know I'm supposed to do this. <laughs> I mean, I knew I was supposed to be a professional speaker. I knew I was supposed to be a writer. I knew now I'm supposed to be the, I'm probably the fast growing publisher in America because the people go to New York to get a publishing. And, and Jack and I got turned on by 144 people. And then finally, a little HCI, Health Communications, said, well, we'll buy it. But you guys got to buy 20,000 books at $6 each. That's $120,000, right? And if we went home to our wives and told them what we were we signed up for, they'd go, ah! Right, right. Right. Us, right? So, and that's why, you know, everyone gets rejected going to New York almost, unless your name's Joe Rogan or something. And I don't think he's got a book out yet. I want to talk to him. But, but Mark, how many people would quit after the first one that said no well, or the second? Most. And certainly by the fifth time, they're done. They're yeah. done. Yeah. But and how it, do you keep we it, wouldn't have a light bulb it? without 10,000 right. experiences. Which... Well, how do you mentally keep being able to do it? How do you, you know, to, to go on past the five, past the six, past the seven, if all of these people are saying no, you, there's got to be a point where you start questioning yourself. Maybe this isn't. <laughs> well, two two answers. Number one is we do a clean four letter word. We say N E X T next because there's always out there someone who will fund you, buy it, and move it. And and Jack and I were talking. We had two marketplaces. I own a business marketplace, still do, uh, or some part of it. And Jack owned the educational marketplace. He'd already written a book and sold a lot of copies of 101 Ways to Build Self Esteem in the Classroom. And Jack started in his class at Harvard. He's a superstar, no question about it. But he's shy. He's introverted. He's an inside guy. I'm the outside guy. I'm the marketing sales guy. And I've been selling, like I said, since I was nine. I was a, sold the most greeting cards ever in America at nine years old because I wanted a bicycle because my parents couldn't afford a bicycle and I wanted it. And I visualized, I had a picture on the wall every night and like this 101 times, I'd, go, I'd see myself bicycling, you know, and being what's called a Windy City wheelman, uh, you know, which I obviously was and did one a lot of long distance races long, long ago. That's not today. Anyhow, um, so that's number one. And number two is if you got a white hot burning desire, you will burn through all the and negativity, burn through all the rejection. And, and the place you got to hold your desire is white hot is in your head. And then you got to just find one other person. One and one equals power of 11. And nowadays, it's obviously my wife, who I call the goddess of exquisiteness, Crystal. You know, she and I do everything together and move as one. We are two hearts with one major soul. Amazing. And people say, well, you're a formidable couple. And now our little company is, yes, we're writing books, but within five years, you're going to see we're going to be a giant entertainment company. And and uh, the first story in here, which, because I know you've read this, is a fable of Michaela. And I said to Crystal, we got to do it a fable because... I'm Danish, and I'm the only guy you probably ever met that read all 147 of Hans Christian Andersen's works in Danish, yes. right? But you know all of them because Walt Disney bought them. Ugly Duckling, The King Has No Clothes. I can name every one of them, and you'd go, I know that story, but I know it because my kids and I watch a movie, or you and I watch right. movies when we were kids, uh, and I'm older than you. But the, the point is, we wrote the fable, and now we got people in Hollywood saying we want to buy it, but Crystal has written the screenplay, which is a whole different level of writing, wow. and she's taken tutelage from the best of the best. And and like when they did James Bond with Pierce Brosnan, they do three of them at once, so they do three right. next six years of shows, all the shots he does in London, all the shots in Israel, all the shots in Turkey – and change clothes and that way the actor is cheaper he doesn't break a thing he doesn't have any scan or she have any scandals isn't it cool that is great that's a good and they're idea. saying our little fable of michaela is going to be uh bigger than harry potter and it, so what i'm saying to all of you is and i did write a book right here behind me th how to think bigger than you ever thought you could think and you can buy that again for like 10 bucks at any bookstore uh, or, or amazon or wherever you want to buy it um the point is we all need to think bigger right well i you know i just need to make 50 grand or 100 grand or 150 grand a year 
Well, if I try to pay you right now, David, and I try to hire you and I say, well, tell me what you're worth. I only want to pay you $10. You're going to go, are you nuts? <laughs> and most of us settle too early. You're all vastly potentially rich if you do your due. You got to be who you want to be first in, in awareness. Then you got to do some activity, whatever that is, to be prosperous. And then you'll have whatever it is you want to have because all of it's available. If you can desire it, you can manifest it. That's why Think and Grow Rich, which is a critical book to read, says whatever the mind can conceive and believe at depth, it can achieve. And I wanted to be world's best-selling author. And now Guinness Book of Records says Mark Victor Hansen's world's best-selling nonfiction author. Congratulations. Wonderful. Well, Mark, it's been an absolute honor to have you on. Make I, sure I love every minute. You go to markvictorhansenlibrary.com. Mark Victor Hansen, we're good friends. Thank you so much again, Chicken Soup for the Soul Series. And of course, remember, everyone ultimately needs to have a biography written. So make sure you reach out to markvictorhansenlibrary.com. This has been David Kogan with the Alliances Hero Show. Continue to stay tuned and make sure that you go to alliances.com. That's E-L-I-A-N-C-S.com. The only place where entrepreneurs align. Mark, thank you so much again for being on the show today. My joy. And I hope everyone, whether they do the biography by themselves or autobiography or with us, um, the world will be better off and so will you. Absolutely. Thank you.